Ah, Shadow of the Colossus. It's a game that's loved by all. Actually, I don't like- It's a game that's loved by all. And no one loves it more than me. Since the dawn of man, we have dreamt of battling enormous creatures. And the next morning, we did that. But since then, fighting elephants has been considered unethical. So all we could do for a long time is fantasize about it. Until Shadow of the Colossus. When this game came out in 2005, it blew my tiny mind. I mean, I was still wrapping my head around being able to destroy the melons in Metal Gear Solid 2. Without any knowledge of programming, it seemed to me that the technical ambition of this game just dwarfed what other studios were making at the time. Most examples of character movement that I'd seen up until that point had been on ugh, static surfaces. <laughs> and bar the odd moving platform and a few other examples, generally uprighty whitey rather than loopity doopity. Mario Galaxy wowed the world with its complex gravity physics and a character reorienting to surfaces of any angle. Here you're climbing all over a deforming, fully animated creature and they achieved this years before Mario Galaxy even came out. Take that, Yoshiaki Koizumi, you idiot. Surely coding of this level is beyond anything I could ever imagine, I thought. And for this reason, a fantasy was born in my head. For more than a decade, I would daydream about suddenly just possessing that knowledge. Like imagining myself standing on stage as the front man of my favorite band. <laughs> or like a cool Iron Man guy who can make the things in a cave. With a box of scraps. And also I'm the cool band guy. <laughs> now I didn't simply resign myself to being a dummy and never try to work towards this level of understanding. I've tried to learn. And what I've learned is that in the area of the brain that deals with maths, I have stinky poopy doo doo. Whereas most other people have more brain. I took AS level mathematics twice and got an E. Twice. Now, while I don't have a mathematical mind, I do have a creative visual mind, which means that if I just believe in myself, numbers don't matter. Because with this mind, I can come up with ideas like a hot dog bayonet cap. A tasty snack for the infantryman on the go. Mm. Or stopping your cat from scratching your armchair by setting it on fire. In other words, problem solving. Problems. I'm amazing at solving them because I've got a lot of them. And after attempting different things like the climbing in my platformer video and my 3D platformer character controller, I've gained some insight and realized that you don't need to know a lot about maths and trigonometry and such to solve complex problems. And so today, I'm going to solve this problem step by step and create my own Shadow of the Colossus climbing system. Okay, our goal is to climb Mount Martin, who is a mountain man or a man mountain, from a game that I made several years ago called Platwormer. And in this game, you go up mostly. In fact, you only go up, only up, in fact. And then you wonder why you didn't take this game further. So the first thing we need to do is find the position on the Colossus's mesh that we're going to stick to when we jump on it. So we're going to fire a raycast down from the player. From the raycast, we get some information like which mesh was hit, which triangle on the mesh was hit, and something very useful called a barycentric coordinate. Barycentric coordinates were invented in 1827 by barycentric. Essentially, you have three points anywhere in 3D space. Each of these points has a mass, and the coordinate is the center of mass of all of these points. You can visualize it like a tug of war between these three points. If this one's not pulling very hard, then the fight's going to be mainly between the other two. If it's not pulling at all, then the fight will be completely between the other two. And in this case, they're pulling equally as hard, so the point will be halfway between them on this edge. If all three are pulling just as hard, then the point is in the center of the triangle. So basically, you can describe any point on a triangle with three numbers. That is so damn interesting. I just want to thank you for... Can I give you a prize? But the really useful thing about this is that this point is a relative position to the three corners. So this point always moves relative to the mesh's deformation. So now we just use the direction the face is pointing and make the character reorient to the surface. So now we've got a character standing still on one triangle. Wow. So before I win game of the year, we need to find the position on the current triangle that's in front of the player and make the player move towards that. So how do we do this? Well, we can use what's called a plane cast, which basically finds the point where a line intersects a plane. And so we just shove the plane through the player and check each edge to see if it intersects. And that way we get the point in front and behind on the edge of the triangle. So now we can, oh, wait, what, what's going on? Uh, Dormin, Do Dormin, I'm in the middle of a video right now. 
Okay, it's not a good time. No, 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 there's no sponsor in this video, Dormin. Okay, thank you. Bye. So now we can climb all over a Colossus, as long as the Colossus is made of one polygon. But I'm pretty sure that Shadow of the Colossus had a couple more polygons, and so instead of just doing a plane cast for all of the edges on the current triangle, we do one for all of the edges on the mesh. And then each frame, based on the speed of the character, we travel through these points to get to our desired position. And in case you're wondering, no, we can't just check the next triangle along, because firstly, the mesh doesn't contain any data for which triangle is next to which. And when we're close to a corner, we might actually cross several triangles in one frame. So we gotta check them all. Now, this all sounds well and good, but remember it's an animated mesh. So we just got this new point on the mesh that we want to go to, but in the next frame, it could be in a completely different position. So using this formula, which I do not understand, we can use this new position and the corner positions of the new triangle to calculate that point's barycentric coordinate. And then just like we're doing here, we calculate the animated position at the beginning of the next frame. But there's a problem still. This triangle isn't actually rotating here. It's just three points moving around, giving it the illusion of rotating. So all the character can do right now is face in one direction. The solution to this is to use those front and back positions that we found earlier and record them as barycentric coordinates. Then at the beginning of the next frame when the mesh is animated, we also calculate their new positions and using those we can get the new direction the character is meant to point. And now we can climb a colossus. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself slightly. This is really good progress, but believe me, there's a lot more to do. And if you thought that any of those steps I just mentioned were complicated, then hold on to your Colossus, because we are just getting started. If you don't believe me, just ask the Pray for the Gods dev team. For a game like Shadow Colossus, or like our game, Pray for the Gods, like you are climbing a deforming creature, which really is like a level, like a fully deforming level. And you can speak this gent, but like it is not the same. <laughs> it is vastly harder uh, <laughs> yeah. and the edge cases are pretty insane. I haven't even told you the full story of how we got to this point. You may have noticed that I'm highlighting the blue triangles that are adjacent to the triangle we're standing on. And you might remember me saying something like, the mesh doesn't contain any data for which triangle is next to which. Remember when I said that? Ah yes, I remember it like it was two minutes ago. See, I'm working with a lot of triangles on this mesh. 13,296 in fact. I'm doing a plane cast for three edges on every triangle, and because I'm getting the front and back positions, I'm actually doing all of that three times. So that equals 119,664 plane casts every frame, which makes the game go, I think the technical term is, really slow. So let's do this the non-donkey brained way. So instead, before the game starts, we can scan through each of the triangles and each of their edges, and we make a list of every triangle. And in every triangle in this list is listed every edge in the triangle. And in each edge in each triangle in this list is listed two triangles that the edge is attached to. And the reason that we know an edge shares two triangles is because each vertex on the mesh has a number. And so if you compare the numbers on two triangles that share an edge, you'll find they have the same numbers. So if that was confusing, it's about to get simpler. So don't worry. I start on a triangle. Now, instead of iterating through every single triangle, I look at my current triangle in the list that I just made, and I can see which edges are attached to it. I find the edge that I'm passing through. That edge in my new list also has information about which triangles are attached to it. One of those triangles must be the one that I just came from. So by process of elimination, the other triangle is the one that I'm passing into. And then I do another plane cast and repeat the whole process to find the next edge and the next triangle. So that takes us from 119,664 plane casts a frame down to just nine, which makes the game go, I think the technical term is, really fast. <laughs> So it's so fast that I can actually travel about twice the height of the Colossus every frame with no noticeable frame rate drop. And I think I remember the Pray for the Gods team saying that they could only have a couple hundred polygons or something before it slowed down. I mean, this is also a bare bones scene right now, but I must be doing something right. In case the thought hadn't occurred to you, one benefit of using the mesh data like this is that it's absolutely impossible for us to just fall off the mesh. 
So what else is there to do? Well, there's loads of things. I'd say we're still pretty far off of having climbing that's truly like the climbing in Shadow of the Colossus. And as mentioned, the difficulty only really goes up from here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one if you want to see how that goes.